Hello again. One great source of inspiration for later musicians was the composer Perdolesi, um, 1710 to 1736. In 1780, the London music publisher Robert Bremner issued a set of trio sonatas under the title Twelve Sonatas for Two Violins and a Bass or an Orchestra, composed by Giovanni Battista, Battista Pergolesi. Um, Bremner wrote on the title page, the manuscript of these sonatas was procured by a, gen a curious gentleman of fortune during his travels through Italy, during, in other words, the Grand Tour. The attribution of these sonatas to Pergolosi was doubted even, even at the time in the 18th century and it was rejected um, towards the end of the, the, the latter part of the, 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 the 20th century. However, earlier in the 20th century, Stravinsky got hold of them and he put them to use in the opening of his neoclassical Pulcinella suite, which was premiered in 1922. Um, by the way, Stravinsky and the publisher Robert Brenner were most probably wrong in attributing the original piece to Pergolesi. It's now thought to have been composed by somebody called Domenico Gallo, uh, who was a Venetian composer of the same period. So let's hear the first movement of Gallo's Sonata No. 1 in G major. Um, if you know of the Pulcinella suite, this will be very familiar uh, with you, to you.
someone for <coughs> for whom the Grand Tour was something of a of a business trip was was the historian Charles Burney, uh, whose travels resulted his travels to the continent in 1770 resulted in in his book The Present State of Music in France and Italy. It was a book he followed up a few years later with a more important book, which I think he called The History of Music. Um, Burney recognised in his writings that Antonio Vivaldi was the most popular composer for the violin in Italy. But of course Vivaldi was more than that, and he wrote for many other instruments, including the flute. Between 1732 and 1739, Robert Kerr, Lord Robert Kerr indeed, who was the son of the third Marquis of Lothian, went on a grand tour of Europe during which he spent some time in Italy and particularly Venice. This chap was a clean, a keen flautist and, and he returned to Scotland from his grand tour with a particularly prized souvenir, a handwritten manuscript of a flute concerto by Vivaldi. He coughed up about one guinea for the manuscript apparently. And a few years ago, not many many years ago, this manuscript was discovered um, at the National Archives of Scotland in Edinburgh. It had been preserved in the family papers of the Marquises of Lothian and, um, and forgotten about. And I think it was in 2012 it was performed by an ensemble called La Serenissima in, in Perth Concert Hall. The piece was called Il Grand Mogul uh, and Vivaldi wrote it towards the end of his career in about 1730. Of course Vivaldi never went to India at all but, but it's thought that Il Grand Mogul was written in honour of a Venetian merchant who had some connections with the Mughal Empire in, in India. I said that the manuscript was handwritten uh, but it wasn't written by Vivaldi himself and yet Despite that, it's worth hundreds of thousands of pounds today. As for the chap who brought it back to the UK, Lord Robert Kerr, well, he undertook formal musical education before being commissioned into the army in 1739 and he was the only high-ranking Hanoverian soldier to be killed at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1746. Imagine that. So let's hear... All three movements of Vivaldi's flute concerto in D minor, Il Grand Mogul.
Well, that concludes that concerto, this video and indeed this programme. I hope you enjoyed our grand tour together.